Mock Draft Matt in the building. What's good, y'all? Hope you're having a blessed day. This is the Mock Draft 2.0, and I'm not going to lie. I was very surprised. I didn't know how the first one was going to turn out, but you guys loved it. We got over 10,000 views and almost 1,000 likes, and I think the like goal, I said 1,000 for another one. We got close to it, so I'm going to do another one. Y'all seem to like it, and if y'all want to see a part three, and in the part three, I will do a full 60 picks, two rounds. That's going to be a long video. If y'all want to see that, let's aim for 500 likes on this video. And we'll do a part three, Mock Draft 3.0. But this is 2.0. Been doing a ton of research. So if you're new to this channel and love content like this, you know what to do. You're going to subscribe if you like it. You can always, you know, if you don't like my other content, unsubscribe later. Not that big of a deal. But without further ado, let's get straight into it. First up, we got the Wizards. The way they're looking this season, they got Westbrook and Bill. They need a lot. I understand they got Westbrook and Bill, but they still need a lot of pieces. We all know Cade Cunningham, Jalen Green. That's probably what, who the first pick's going to be between. And as much as I love the Jalen Green kid, we're just not passing up on Cade Cunningham. Too special of a talent. You throw them in there, immediate impact. They could they could shock people if they did have the first pick and get Evan Mobley. But, as always, in basketball at least, if you have a lottery pick, you get the best player available. And that's Cade Cunningham. So, number two, we got the Detroit Pistons. Very similar situation. All the top five are going to be very just... You're going to want the best players available. <sighs> Ooh, bro. We'll take a look at I know you guys, I think you like when we was taking a look at him. So, you know, we got Blake Griffin for two more years. Jeremy Grant. Plumley. They could go center-wise, point guard-wise. It really don't matter. Really doesn't matter. Uh, this draft's going to be different from the last one, too, because we've seen a lot of these players step up their games. And some players step back. Man, I want to take Jalen so bad. I do, but do they get the center? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to think. If I'm in this position, this is why I love these videos. This is very interesting, you know. Let me know in the comment section if you're rocking with these vids. You only really have Blake Griffin and Plumlee. Jalen Green, I know some of y'all are going to be like, what? But that's more of the risky pick. Mm, man, this would be tough. This would be really tough. I would, if they do wind up with a second pick, I would love to see what they do here. I, I think they roll the dice. It's all about rolling the dice. We're getting Jalen Green going number two. That's going to shock some people. But I think you roll the dice. It's not a center's league no more. It's not. He's such a special talent, too. I'm okay with that pick. I really am. I'm okay with that pick. And, man, that gets some fan, the publicity. Is that what you want to call it? It's just people hyped to go to the games. No one's going to be hyped to see Evan Mobley play. With all due respect, with the third pick, it's going to be short and sweet. Evan Mobley, he's going to the Wolves. The Wolves have took so many risks over the years. I believe they got Wiggins, right, with the number one pick years ago. Is that right? Not too sure. Got Edwards, so they're tired of getting guards. And I understand. We'll scroll down. I'll show you. I understand you got Cat for four years. He's a good center, but you're not passing up on Evan Mobley at three if he's up there, in my opinion. Evan could go two. I don't think he's going to go one, but I really think he could go two. We're going to keep it short and sweet. The Wolves would love to have Evan Mobley at number three if he falls. Number four, the Pelicans. Mmm. Whew. Where do you even start with the Pelicans? Sorry, Pelicans fans. I know I know you guys like to... I think y'all really do like when we look at this, so I'll try to show y'all. You know, center-wise, you're good. You, you got Brandon Ingram, Steven Adams. They can all play the four and five. I'll show you the other ones. Hayes, he's all right. They just need so much. Lonzo Ball's not going to be there much longer, it looks like. Reddick's, what, 54 now? He's getting really old. You are getting a score. You need somebody to bring excitement to this team. I understand Zion brings excitement, 
But he's not a shooter. He's not a true scorer. Can he score? Yeah. But he ain't giving you 30 every night. You need a guy that can do a little bit of it all. Ooh. <laughs> Number four. This draft's way different from the last one. It really is. His draft stock continues to go up. It really continues to go up. I was thinking they might get a small forward going into this when I was doing some of my research, but I forgot they low-key had Brandon Ingram, who's a great small forward in general. I think you get Jonathan Kuminga, who's not a guy. He's a guy that people or NBA draft boards are talking about, but as casual fans, not too many people have heard of him. And the reason for that was... Because he's in the G League. He skipped college. He's that good. Is Jalen Suggs a great player? Yes. But Kuminga, the upside's a little bit higher. Pelicans get Kuminga. I like that pick. I really like that. I think he could I think he could be a star one day. It's kind of weird, too. Not a lot of people actually know how, just how good Kuminga is. I think he's from Congo. Is that right? I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Number five. Oklahoma, sorry, I'm rolling my sleeves up. It was kind of cold before I started recording. Number five, we got OKC. Don't they have, I think they have two picks in this draft. Yeah, two picks, two lottery picks right now. They get the 11th pick. Whoo, they need anything and everything. I'll show y'all right here. Just look at this roster real quick. It's bad. They got so many picks, though. They're just you know, tanking. They're just trying to get some good players. OKC, this is just a great fit. Almost like a can't-miss player. He, he really is a can't-miss player. Such a great, humble young dude. They're wrong with Suggs, and they would be pretty... They'd be pretty happy to take him at five, I feel like. He could go two or three. So for him to go at five... They're not passing up. Next, we got the Kings. Kings are a mess. I can't remember the last time they've really been relevant. Center-wise, they got Bagley right, and then they got Harrison Barnes playing the three and four. Bagley, he's surprisingly been good for them. They got Fox. De'Aaron Fox is such a strange player. I don't know what to think about him. Is he a all-star player? Is he not? I have no idea. The rookie, is that the rookie or no? Ty Tyrese Halliburton. You know, he been okay. They just have a lot of good role players, I feel like. They need a star. Somebody get the city excited. They're not getting a center or a power forward. They need a star player. Ooh, I'm not going to say it because I don't want to spoil it. But I want to take him so bad. But I don't think you can just yet. I can't validate it. He hasn't played enough. And that's... Sure, Cooper, but stay tuned. He, he might go in the lottery. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, man. Imagine if the Kings get Sharif Cooper. How hype that city would be. That's an instant ticket seller. But that's a little too high right now, at least in my opinion. And everybody else's opinions. But there is another guy that could bring excitement to this city. Don't wanna, I can't roll the dice. I don't think I'd be a good GM because I really like just risking things in life and rolling the dice. So, yeah. As much as I wanted to take Scotty Barnes here, because right now I do think he's a little ahead of Jalen Johnson. That's just my opinion. I think they're 1A, 1B. don't matter, whichever player you like more. As much as I want to take them, I do not see them being dominant players in their first, or their second or first year. And they need a player that's going to come in and start getting buckets. And that player is no other than Cameron Thomas from LSU. Dude's averaging over 20 a game as a freshman. Woo! You got to be excited to have him. I am not an LSU fan by any means, but that kid can play some basketball. Next up, we got the Bulls. Woo! Bulls. When's the last time they've been relevant? Derrick Rose, 2011. Is that right? And even before then, it was probably when Michael Jordan got there. The The Bulls are in the same situation as the Kings. They need more scores. Zach Levine has been a fantastic player for them. You're paying Porter Jr. way too much. They have... It just doesn't make any sense. Kobe White, been good for them. 
I think they're getting another score here. Uh, there's not a lot of great centers in this draft class. I'll show you real quick. We took the only good one, and the only other ones left are Greg Brown. I don't know why this website doesn't have him listed as a center. Greg Brown, Isaiah Jackson. Ooh. I'm not too high on the Sharp dude. And then Luca Garza, I am high on. I don't know if Luca Garza is a first-round pick, though. The only good centers in this draft are really Isaiah Jackson and Greg Brown left, and that's my opinion. But anyways, the Bulls will not be taking a center with this seventh pick if they do have it. They need somebody to compliment Zach Levine if he does stay there. I really don't see him staying there because I think he wants to join a winning team. They need a score. They need... They need somebody to get the city excited. And as much as I want to take Sharif Cooper again, whew, I can't do it. I, I don't think I can do it. I really don't. Zach Levine's a good point guard for them. Cooper's ranked, I think, 25th. Yeah, on the draft board. Yeah, I can't take him at 7th. But what I can do is take Scotty Barnes. I am very comfortable with taking him at 7th. Yes, he's a small forward. Yes, he's a big player. Do the Bulls need a point guard? Probably. They got Levine. They would like a backup point guard. But I think Scotty Barnes is a guy. The Bulls are not going to be relevant for, what, at least two or three more years. I don't think he's going to be a player that comes into the league and starts dominating. Give him a couple years, he could live up to the hype. I firmly believe that, and they're rocking with him. Next up, the Hornets. Well... The only thing to say about the Hornets is they got LaMelo Ball. He's been he's probably going to be Rookie of the Year if he keeps it up. I don't know what's really going on between him and the coach. Apparently, he's having a turnover problem. Hayward's been good. Malik Monk, eh. Not, eh, you know. You know how it is. This whole team's a little mess. I believe Devontae Graham's starting over to LaMelo, and that's the whole controversy. I don't really keep up with the Hornets like that because who keeps up with the Hornets? I mean, they're such a boring franchise. <sighs> you got Melo, and they have so many guards on this team. I know exactly where I'm going with this if I'm the GM. I don't want to take a boring player, but we have so many guards we got to. I say boring player. Not boring. This is probably the most exciting power forward and center in the draft. His draft stock has gone up so high because he's been the only bright side on this Kentucky team. We got Isaiah Jackson, and I love that pick, especially for the Hornets because he brings energy. Energy. And that dude can block some shots. He's not a bad offensive player. They'll work on that at the NBA. Not too worried about that. At ninth, we got the Raptors. Well, well, well. First things first, they're overplaying almost every player on this roster, not getting their money's worth. I don't think they're rocking with a center. I really don't, especially with that center coming off the board. I think they would love to have Isaiah Jackson, but I think Isaiah Jackson would go eight. I think he's for sure going to be a lottery pick. So with Isaiah Jackson coming off the board, they will no longer be pursuing a power forward slash center. And they will be looking for another score. I wouldn't say they're bringing in a guy that needs to excite them or anything. They just need another guy that can score the ball, play good overall. And that player is Jalen Johnson. Yes, he fell a little. Everyone's high on him. Ninth isn't too bad. I think the Rock, not the Rockers, the Raptors would roll with him. The old Knicks. They've been surprising everybody so far. I think currently right now they're ranked 8th eight, in the East. Is that right? They're ranked 8th. Let's look at the list. You see it. I ain't going to talk about it too much. Because they don't have no good star players. They got the Obi Toppin dude last year. Kind of a boring pick if you ask me. Because he's not a star. Could he be a star? Yeah, but not right away. The Knicks need somebody to bring excitement. They need excitement. They need somebody to come in there and produce right away. I'm doing it. If I'm the GM of the Knicks, I'm doing this. 
And I'm not going to get backlash for it because everybody loves the kid. He's going to be such a special talent. He's averaging 25 and 10 in college, and he hasn't even played basketball for over a year. Believe the hype. He's coming off the board. I'm not scrolling that far. Where are you at? Believe the hype, Sharif Cooper. Goes in the lottery. What about that? Bro, if you don't like... If you're not subscribed after that, what are you doing? We, we taking risk all over the place. Sharif Cooper goes in the lottery, 10th overall. I love that pick. If I, I'm, at, I'm trying to make these decisions like I'm the GM or the I'm the person making the picks. I love that pick. I don't even think it's high risk. I just think that's a great pick. Next up, Oklahoma City. As you know, we got Jalen Suggs with the fifth pick. Let me go back to the other players. As you know, we got Jalen Suggs with the fifth pick, but that don't matter. Do we need a center? Yeah. But we need scores. It's been proven that you don't need a true center to win anymore. We need scores and we need ball players. And everybody is so high on this man. Ooh, I can't do it. Ain't been playing good enough. Actually, I'm going to do it. No, I'm not. I'm not going to do it. I was thinking about Brandon Boston, but man, he's been so wishy-washy. I don't think he's a lottery pick just yet. I didn't even have him going in the first round in my last draft, but I think he might go today. It's tough. It's between Zaire Williams and Keon Johnson. Personally, I just like Keon Johnson more. I think he has more of an upside. I'm rocking with him. Zaire Williams has been underperforming at college. He's shooting 32% from the field. Bad turnover to assist ratio. Keon, it's nothing but upside, baby. Welcome to the team. The Rockets. We all know how this is going to go. But I'll show you how the team looks. We got John Wally Wall, Victor Oladipo, Eric Gordon, Christian Wood, who's been a fantastic player. Exum. You see. We need a center. Bad. Or score. But keep in mind, we do have the 21st pick. So we will not be taking a center here because we need a scorer. And a good basketball player. And there is a lot on the board that I am high on. I am high on Josh Christopher, you see right here. I'm high on Moses Moody from Arkansas. He didn't go in the last draft, but he might go in this one. I'm so high on everybody. I'm high on Matthew Hurt, averaging 20 a game. He will not be a lottery pick, though. No, not right now, anyways. We need a score. I don't know why everyone's so high on Zaire Williams. I guess I'm just not. I don't see it right now. Like, I don't see it with Brandon Boston. We need a score. We need a small forward. Somebody that can just score. Bring Not even excitement. We just need good players. We really do. Trey Mann, not high on him. I think we do it. We don't roll it with Moses Moody because I do think that would somewhat be rolling the dice. I really do. I love this kid. I think he's going to be really good. Nobody's talking about him. We're getting James McKnight. I like to pick. I do, I do. Next up, we got the Knicks again. What about that? I didn't know the Knicks had two picks in the first round. I did not know that. We got Cooper with the first pick. And now let's take a look at... Because this is what the GMs do. We take a look. So we got Cooper. Like I said, really don't need a center. Centers ain't going to win you games. You got Knox. Obi Toppin. No, you're okay at centers. They're not going to win you games anymore. It's not how the NBA is. And if you disagree with me, you can. But you know I'm right. We, we all know I'm right. We don't. We rolled the dice on the first one, so we're going to play this one a little safe. A little safe. It would be the most Knicks thing to take, Corey Kispert. Kispert. Hope I said that right. Sorry if I didn't. But I'm not going to. I, I'm not taking him because I, I wouldn't take him at 13. I don't think he's a lottery player just yet. Since the Knicks did somewhat roll it, I guess people would say taking Cooper with the 10th pick is rolling the dice, but me personally, I don't feel like it's rolling the dice. I guess we got to play this a little bitty safe because my coach is calling me like, bro, we got to get a for sure good player. 
I'm like, I got you, I got you. I like I like him, I really do. We're gonna get Josh Christopher at 18th. I like him over Brandon Boston for many reasons. Christopher, let me validate that because I know people like Brandon Boston. Boston's averaging 11 per game, playing not so great. Christopher's averaging 16 per game, five assists, five rebounds, shooting 50% from the field. Brandon Boston shooting 30% from the field. I take the most efficient player every day. So, and uh, Christopher looks to score. Brandon Boston looks to pass. So that ain't gonna work in the NBA. You gotta be a scorer. Next up, we got the Spurs. We all know where I'm going with this. Actually, we don't. I don't know why I said that. Show you the little list. They they just need a good player, you know? They just need a good player. A good, solid player. And this is the most Spurs pick of Spurs picks. <laughs> We're getting Corey Kispert. I like that pick, really do. I love the kid. I love that pick. I just love that pick so much. I feel like I've said that on every pick, but I feel like this draft's gonna be better than my first one. And that's why we're doing it, so we can get better. And then the next one, if y'all want to see it, like I said, 500 likes, because I really like doing these. The Magic. Whew. Sorry, I had to get a little drink, guys. Ah, oh, dude. It's stuck in my throat. Whew, the Magic. I really don't even want to show you the roster, because they just want a good player here. They just want a good player. I don't think they roll the dice here, but I don't think they get a center. I don't. I think they get one of them small forwards up on the board slash shooting guards. Not Greg Brown. Why did I do that? I like Marcus Bagley. I like Herb Jones from Alabama and the Ponds dude from Tennessee. I've been watching them a lot. I don't think they're first rounders, though. They might go, if we do another vid, they might go in the second round. I don't think they're first rounders. But anyways, back on top of with this. They need a good player here. And it's about time he came off the board. We're getting Zaire Williams. I like the pick at 15. If he falls at 15, any team would love to have him. No explanation needed. In high school, he was a star. Not producing at the college level like he should be, but he's been hurt. So I forgot to mention that. Sorry about that. All respect goes to him. We got the Cavs up. Oh, the Cavs haven't been relevant since O'Bron left. We are not taking a point guard here. We have Colin Sexton and the uh, Okoro dude who's a shooting guard and Darius Garland. All of them were five-star slash four-star recruits in high school. No, all of them were five-stars. We're not taking any more guards. We're not. I'm tired of taking five-star guards. We got three. They need to develop. Give them time. Sexton's developing. Garland will. And then Okoro's been pretty solid as a rookie. I know exactly where we're going with this. Not Duran Sharp. I love this dude in college. He's been so good for Texas. We're getting Greg Brown. More of the modern day power forward slash center. That's why it was Shinner. I said Shinner. It's center. He's listed at power forward. It's because he is only 6'9". He can do a little bit of everything. I That is a great pick. We have the Warriors at 17. It doesn't really matter what the Warriors do because they're getting clay back. Sca their cap space is terrible. Oh, it tells you right here. That's so cool. This whole website's pretty cool, honestly. We know they got the center. Oh, Wiseman. Oubre. They just want a good player here. You can roll it. This is the thing. When you're so late in this draft, you can just roll the dice if you're a good team like the Warriors or Lakers. I think they get another... I don't think they get a center here because there's not that many good ones up to take in the first round. So we are going to be getting a player that I have been love watching in college. He's been a great player. Just flew up the draft boards out of nowhere in this past two weeks. We're getting Moses Moody from Arkansas. A sleeper pick at 19. This dude's been a beast at Arkansas. The best player on the team and he's just a freshman. 6'6". Six, six. I don't know. That could be a hit or miss, though, because he has some. He had some games earlier this year. I was like, "Why is he even playing?" So to take him in the first round, you know, it could be a risk. It could not. But when you're the Warriors, you can take risk. We got the Atlanta Hawks next. They need anything and everything. They really do. We got old Trey Young. <sighs> 
I really don't want to take a center this high, but they need one so bad. They really do. They need a center so bad. We got Trey Young, but we do have the 36 pick. And there will be centers up there, so we will not be taking a center at 18. We will be getting another score, another guy that can make plays, do stuff. And I think he's coming off the board, although I personally think he's been playing very bad. He's a talented kid and will turn it on. It's just a matter of time. Brandon Boston from Kentucky. Welcome to the team. Haven't been high on the kid, but he's picked it up in his last three games. He scored 18 points, 18 points, and 8 points. He's just been playing better. He's getting more comfortable. I get it. There's a lot of pressure at Kentucky. When you're a five-star, you're supposed to be the man. He's not the only one struggling at Kentucky. Everybody's struggling. He's a talented kid, to say the least. If he keeps it up, he will be a first-rounder. But if he goes back to playing trash, he will not be a first-rounder. He could be a lottery pick. A lot of people are high on him. I think he was 15 on these draft boards, so yeah. Next up, we got the Phoenix Suns. I thought the Suns drafted already. I guess they didn't. But you know the vibes. We got DeAndre Ayton at center. We would not be taking a center. We need a guy. We need the, the Suns. If you're a Suns fan, is there Suns fans? I've never met one in my life. But if there is and you're watching this video, we need excitement. Yeah, we got Booker. He's exciting. But we haven't brought, when we brought him in, it, it didn't bring excitement to the city. We need a guy to bring excitement. Unfortunately, with that being said, there's not that many exciting players left. There's not that many. I'll just show you if we went the point guard, shooting guard route. Shooting guard, there's not that many great ones. You know, power forwards. You just looking at this list, you're like, man, there's not, they're not that exciting. Small forwards, same thing. You got Bagley and then centers. We're not taking a center, so it don't matter. The point guards are where we're going to be going. It really, it's such a tough spot for this team at 19. You need an exciting player, another point guard to Chris Paul because he's like 104. He's not going to play forever, although it seems like he might. We're going to get David Johnson. Chris Paul would be a great mentor to him. I like Jaden Springer, though. He's definitely coming off soon. Next up, we got the Memphis Grizzlies. They need everything. Not even looking at, the, I guess we will. I say it every time, but I know some of y'all want to see. Because I know everybody's not a fan of these teams and they want to know what they got. Here, Sorry. Here's what they got. We all know they got Morant. Besides Morant, it's a bunch of scrubs. Let's just be honest. There's no need to joke with ourselves. It's a bunch of scrub to dub dubs. <sighs> We're good center wise. I'm going to get this short and sweet. If Jaden Springer's up there, we're taking him at Tennessee. One of those good freshmen. Him and Ke uh, Keon Johnson, is that his name? They're, they're good for Tennessee. We got the Houston Rockets with their second pick in the first round. We all know what they need. Anything and everything they can take. This is going to be a pick where... Everyone's going to be looking at their 12th pick. Is that going to be a bust or not? Nobody's going to care about this 21st pick, really. They're going to care, but if he's a bust, they're going to be like, eh, who cares? It was the 21st pick. Ooh, I want to take... Ooh, I just don't know. I think we do it. I don't know why he's at 59. He should be way high in this. We're going to get Trendon Watford from LSU. Been doing a lot of film on him. Dude's averaging 20 per game. Might be the SEC player of the year. Nobody's talking about him for some reason. And this is why he fits in perfectly with the Rockets. They need a center, but they need a modern day power forward slash center. He's six foot nine, power forward, can shoot the ball. Who, If he's up there in the first round, you got to get this kid. He's a special talent. He could be an NBA star type of player. We got the Nets with the 22nd pick. At this point, it just feels like the Nets are cheating. We ain't getting a score. We don't need a score. We just need a good player. Well, we could get a score if they're a good player too. So, 
You know how it goes. You know how it goes. Oof. I had a couple in mind. I don't think they get a center here. I believe they have DeAndre and this other guy. I can't think of his name. What's his name? Oh, I guess. No, I guess they don't. I, I thought they had this other player. Must have traded him because they had to trade everyone for Harden. I guess we will rock with him. Came off a little later in the draft, but we're getting Deron Sharp at North Carolina. Everybody thinks this kid can be a lottery pick. Oh, a nice little safe pick, backup center for the Nets. He could be a star, too. You never know with a pick like that. This is where your stars are normally born in, in these late first round. Ooh, the Pacers. Ooh. Man, we not getting a center. They're huge. We got to get a point guard. Here, I'll show you. We got to get a point guard. You see the size on the team. Miles Turner, Sabonis, Warren. Not a point guard, small forward. You know what I'm saying. And I believe if he's up there, he should be up there at this point in the draft. I'm just looking at some others real quick. Just looking at some other players browsing. A little browsing. Yep. They will be rocking with Marcus Bagley. I really like this kid. He may get drafted even before this. Marcus Bagley. 24, we got the Denver Nuggets. Nuggets. This has been a pretty good franchise in the past couple of years. Murray, Jokic, Harris, Green. You know, they got Porter, all them young players. They're young, talented. Hampton, I forgot they had RJ. They got Bobo? I really don't keep up with the Nuggets. Well, we're just taking a good player here. Nothing really we need. This is who the best on the board is. Right here. Everybody's high on Kai and uh, Usman. I believe that's how you say it. But, I think if the Nuggets get another knockdown shooter, it could change the franchise. And I have the perfect player in mind. He goes to Duke. He is rising of draft boards. Matthew Hurt. Hey, I like that name. Matthew Hurt. Dude's averaging 20 per game for Duke. They ain't been playing a lot. They ain't been playing good, but he's been playing good. He's just flying up draft boards. This is a great pick, in my opinion. If they want to beat the Lakers, they need a knockdown shooter. This is your guy. The Bucks. They need shooters to surround Giannis with. I do not care. They do not need a center. They need a shooter shooter. I'll show you all the shooting guards. The shooting guards left really ironically ain't the greatest shooters in the country. But Terrence Clark, he's been hurt for Kentucky. He would be a higher up here if he was playing. Scotty Lewis. All of them. Here's a power forward. Oh, crap. My fault. Here's a small forwards. None of these guys can ironically shoot the greatest. I mean, they, some of, I mean like the vast majority of them. And then your point guards left. Trey Mann is not the best shooter. None of them. But I'm super high on this kid. Once again, not getting a lot of love because he is in the G League, I believe. But his name is Ja'Shawn Nix. I think he's from Las Vegas or somewhere on the West Coast. Yeah, the Bucks would love to have him. He was a good shooter in high school. The Boston Celtics. 26 pick. Ooh, this is one I'm just rolling the dice with if I'm the GM because we're good. We know we're good. All these late picks, this is when you could just really get whoever. Nobody's going to say much. You know what we got. I ain't got to tell you. You know what we got. Could we get a center, though? Hold up. I'm, I really don't keep up with the Boston Celtics enough to know if they got a good center. Taco Fall. He ain't even on the team. He's in the G League, ain't he? Yeah, we got Thompson. So you could say we need a center. And I know exactly where we're going with this. I want to take Garza, but Bassey has... He's the more... 
He's got more upside. I want to take Garza. I love this dude. But I like Bassey. I've been watching him a little in college when they do play on TV. Plays for Western Kentucky, so he doesn't get a lot of love. But I think he's not going to be a star NBA player. I think he's going to be a good backup center, maybe a main center. And he could be a 17-12 and 12 guy. He's not going to put up 25 a night. No way. But I think he's a solid player. All right. Next up. Uh, we got the Philadelphia 76ers with the 27th pick. Whew. I hate to break it to you, Sixers fans, but you're not going to win nothing until Ben Simmons learns how to shoot. You do have Seth Curry, Danny Green. You got shooters around him, but he can't shoot. That's your problem. We are not getting a center. We're already too big. We getting a good player. I got a couple in mind. I do have a couple in mind. I just, I'm a little more high on some of these players ranked so far down. So, I may get a play. No, I don't know. Mm, I don't know, boys. Yep, I think we're getting it. I'm really high on him. I think he was the best player on Kentucky before he got hurt. We're getting Terrence Clark. I like that pick. I like that pick. Terrence Clark from Kentucky. We got the Clips. We know what the Clips got. PG, Kiwi, Leonard. Oh, damn, I ain't got to say it. We just want a good player. We could use a center. I don't think Luka Garza is coming off in the first round. Though. I don't. We could use a center, but I don't think we're taking a center. I don't. We will not be taking a center. Ooh. These are tougher picks than it is when you're high up because you don't know. It's, it's hit or miss. There's no in-betweens. I do have a couple in mind, though. See our point guard, Trey Man. I don't think he's coming off in the first round. I don't know why he's ranked so high up there. He's only 6'1", not that great of a shooter. So if you're wondering why he's not coming off, that's why. Whew. Well, I think I'm going to do it. They're going to get a safe pick here. They're going to get the safe pick. For Michigan, where'd he go? There he is. Franz Wagner. That's a good player. He's not going to be a star right away. He could be, but he's going to be a role player. And they need some role players. Because in the playoffs, they had zero. If the starters didn't win the game, they lost. We have the Jazz with the 29th pick. Hmm. I don't think they're rocking with a center here. Big team. We just need... Maybe the backup point guard for the future. This is where Trey Mann could come off the board. But I don't think he's a first rounder just yet. But this guy for Baylor has been balling. You know who I'm talking about. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Actually, both of them have been balling. You know, they both been balling. It's, it don't matter who you get. Jared Butler, 6'3". Whoever you're more high on. I like Jared Butler a little more. Everyone likes Davian Mitchell, too. <laughs> Butler's coming off with the 29th pick, and... We probably will be going back to back here, which is kind of ironic because I like them both so much, and I knew the Lakers had the last pick. The Lakers, man, look at this roster. They're, they're loaded. They're not getting a center. We know that. They play that little small ball sort of-ish. But they're all big. I think he'd fit in so well with them, and he could be a star. I really think Davian Mitchell could be a star. Him or Butler. Out of those two guys, one of them got to be a star. We got teammates going back-to-back to, back to in the draft. Keep it short and sweet. Davian Mitchell with the 30. Well, he's 38 overall. With the last pick in the first round, and boom. The Matt Mock Draft 2.0 is official. We'll do a little brief run-through real quick. Cade Cunningham, one. Jalen, two. Mobley, three. I ain't going to read them all off. Just show them to y'all real quick. Cameron Thomas at six. It's pretty high, but I like the kid. Isaiah's pretty high. 
Cooper. We had a lot of people. We had a lot of sleepers go. The 16 through 32 was pretty much expected. Moses Moody was pretty high. Boston. I think that's right where he's going to go. If he keeps it up. Wadford. Matthew Hurt. Deshaun Nix. Bassey. Terrence Clark. Yeah. One more look real quick. Show that why I do my outro. But that's the mock draft 2.0. Like I said, if y'all want to see a full two rounds in the next video, 500 likes and I will bring that to y'all. 500 likes. I really enjoy doing these. If you know this channel and a little content like this, what are you doing? Join the family. Hit that subscribe button and leave a like for more. We're on the road to 100K. Thank you so much for our support. It's been awesome. It's been fun. It's been a great journey. If you're new, Think about hitting that subscribe button for real. It means a lot. But that being said, it's going to wrap up this video. And as always, let's be great. I'm out, y'all. Peace.